Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the long overdue sequel to Super Monkey Ball Facts and Glitches. In this riveting instalment, I will primarily focus on covering the regional differences between the NTSCJ, NTSCU and PAL releases of the game. To quickly clue in anyone who might not be familiar with these terms, when games are released internationally, different versions are released to different parts of the world. Originally, this was due to discrepancies in the mains frequency, with NTSC systems running at 60Hz and PAL systems running at 50 but despite many later PAL systems, including the GameCube and Wii, having support for gameplay at 60Hz, the consoles remained region locked and would still refuse to run games made for other regions. Most commonly, and in the case of Super Monkey Ball, there were three separate releases, an NTSCJ release solely for Japan, an NTSCU release typically considered the North American or US version, and a PAL release, typically considered the European version, despite also being the standard for the entirety of Africa and Oceania, the vast majority of Asia, and a lot of South America as well. Most often the changes made between versions were small and would not affect gameplay, but rather were made to better localise the game to the different audiences around the world. For example, translating the game into English for the North American release. However, as different versions were often released on different dates, developers would occasionally remove bugs or make changes based on early feedback before releasing the game in a new region, such as the removal of the story mode bug in Super Monkey Ball 2. But anyway, enough faffing about, it's time to crack on with the facts and glitches. Let's first take a look at the physical differences. The US and PAL copies look almost identical. The artwork on both the front and back is pretty much exactly the same, with a few minor differences, such as the fonts on the back or the positioning of the clouds in the background. The game discs look very similar as well, again with a few slight differences. The Japanese copy comes in a much smaller case and has a cardboard sheath displaying the artwork as is standard for Japanese GameCube games. The front cover is much the same, but the back side of this one is certainly unique. The disc itself is also different from the others, being mostly blue with yellow artwork. I doubt anyone really cares about differences between the manuals, but just in case, here's some footage comparing JP and PAL. My US copy didn't come with a manual, so you'll just have to imagine how wondrous that might look. As for the actual games, the biggest and probably most well-known regional difference is the A.A. Poo song and cutscene, exclusive to the Japanese version. The song is around a minute long and plays upon startup before taking the player to the title screen, as well as on the sound settings menu. In the US and PAL releases, the song is still present in the game files, however cannot be accessed through any means in-game. It was presumably not included in these versions due to nobody being asked to translate and record an English rendition. If you'd like to see the Japanese intro in full, I have a video of it up on my channel. In both the US and PAL versions of the game, Expert Floor 22 has a registered trademark symbol as a part of the stage. For some reason this symbol is absent from the floor on the Japanese release. Similarly, the trademark symbol present on AV logo in the US and PAL versions is missing from the Japanese. This is devastating news for the Japanese Monkey Ball stuntmen, who will never be able to live up to the trademark landing elite of the West. Apart from some text in game and in menus, Japanese Super Monkey Ball is largely in English. The HUD, the credits, the announcer, all completely English. There are still, however, a few discrepancies in the voice lines used between versions, with the few I've noticed all being in Monkey Target. Out. Out PAL is the only release to support multiple languages, these being English, German, French, Spanish and Italian. 
Unlike the Japanese version, selecting one of these languages will completely overhaul all text and voiceover in the entire game. This even includes the text on the goal tape, as well as the text on the goal tape in the background of the main menu. Interestingly, in the GameCube and Wii console settings, you're given the option to change the language of the entire console to Dutch. Doing this and then launching the game will result in a hidden menu appearing upon startup, prompting you to select another language as Dutch is not supported. In the Japanese release, the unit of measure used for the speedometer is kilometers per hour. This was changed to miles per hour for the US version. On PAL, the speedometer will display as miles per hour when playing in English, and kilometers per hour when playing in any other language. The unit of measure used for the speedometer does actually affect the values that will appear, and does not simply swap out the texture. There are a couple of other minor text differences in the Japanese version compared to US and PAL, one of which is the text for the banana count, which will read simply as banana on JP, whereas on US and PAL this was updated to include an S encased by circle brackets. Another difference can be seen when on the name entry stage. On JP, the text in the bottom corner of the screen displays you are greatest baller, you are second baller, and so on, as it did in the original arcade game. On the other releases, the text displays more naturally as you are the greatest, you are second best, etc. In the game menus of the PAL release, a number of capitalization and punctuation errors can be found. However, the most interesting mistake is actually in the game credits. The line of text which is supposed to read 2D designer is missing the final letter, displaying as 2D designy. This error is not present in the NTSC versions. As far as speedrunning is concerned, the version you use doesn't really matter. The only difference that would affect a speedrun is a slight lag you experience on some flaws on the PAL version, most noticeably on Expert 17. That's about it for regional differences, or at least the ones I thought would be interesting enough to include in the video. If you want to know the rest then I recommend going over to the cutting room floor. It's a great website that covers regional differences and unused content in heaps of games and was a great help for making this video. Something I'd like to make note of though, is that on that page it states that you can still unlock extra stages for beginner and advanced so long as you don't use a continue on the Japanese version. I don't know where they got this idea from, but it's not true. What's playing at the moment is a sped up playthrough of beginner on Japanese. I enter floor 10 having not lost a single life, purposefully die right at the start, then go through the goal on my next attempt. I've not used a continue here and still get taken straight to the ending cutscene, no extra flaws. For beginner and advanced, you can't lose a single life. This is the same across all three versions. Anyway, on to the bonus facts. And glitches. First of all, I need to make a factual correction from the previous video. In it I mentioned that both the desert and extra themes have no flaws with bumpers. That's not true. Advanced Extra 5 is most definitely an extra flaw with bumpers. So thank you Toothy for pointing this out pretty much immediately after I posted the video. Speaking of Advanced Extra 5, this flaw has another instance of suspected bananoid oddity. One of the rings rotating around the centre is made up of four platforms and has a bunch on three of them, but not all four. This is presumably because the inner part of AX5 is actually a retextured facsimile of Advanced 30, and the platform with the missing bunch was previously the goal platform. When playing in practice mode, if you beat a floor having achieved a higher score than your previous record from that session, a short tune will play in celebration. Pausing and retrying while this tune is playing will cause the game music to drastically decrease in volume. Ready? 
The volume level will reset after exiting and re-entering the floor. If, for some reason, you want to completely remove the game music, this is actually possible too. By going to the sound setting and holding either left or right to repeatedly switch between mono and stereo, after a short while you should be able to exit the menu with the game music completely disabled, which makes for some interesting gameplay. Select game. Main game. Normal mode. Expert. Ready? Go! Go! Party game! Monkey fight! Round one! Fight! A full console reset is required to bring the music back with this one. I actually discovered this bug myself when I was first working on the video well over a year ago and shared it on Discord thinking it was previously unknown. But while I was working on this script I discovered that it had actually already been found five and a half years earlier by a fella called Ferrox. So nice work matey. So that should about do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I can only apologise for taking so long to put anything out lately. The Lost Games series is still in the works, it's been taking longer than I could have ever imagined to get part 2 finished, but it's all in the interest of making the video as good and as comprehensive as I can. Thank you for your patience, hopefully it shouldn't be in the works for too much longer. Lastly, I just wanted to mention before ending, I plan on posting this video on or around the 10 year anniversary of my YouTube channel. I just wanted to thank everyone who's watched my videos at any point, and especially those who've stuck around, and anyone who's helped me out making a video in the past as well. Just wanted to say thanks. Anyway, I'm gonna uh, leave now. Bye. <laughs>